travel back to Germany for historical figure number seven, Johannes Kepler. Born in 1571 in the small German town of Wilderstadt, Johannes Kepler grew up under the glow of the stars, a world that fascinated him from childhood. Frail in health but sharp in mind, he studied theology and mathematics at the University of Tübingen, where he encountered the revolutionary ideas of Copernicus, that the planets revolved around the sun. In 1600, Kepler joined the brilliant but temperamental Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe in Prague. Tycho's detailed planetary observations would prove crucial. When Tycho died the following year, Kepler inherited this treasure trove of data and the monumental challenge to make sense of the motion of the planets. Kepler turned his attention to Mars, the most stubborn of the planets to fit any circular model. After years of relentless calculation, he made a stunning discovery. Planets do not move in perfect circles, but in ellipses. This became his first law of planetary motion. Then came the second law. The planets move faster when near the sun and slower when farther away. And finally, the third law, which revealed a mathematical harmony between the time a planet takes to orbit the sun and its distance from it. Kepler believed the universe was built on divine geometry, a cosmic symphony where mathematics was the language of God. The 1619 masterpiece, Harmonosis Mundi, The Harmony of the World, expressed this belief, combining music, geometry, and astronomy in one vision of celestial order. Though he endured poverty, religious conflict, and the loss of his family, Kepler never lost faith in the power of reason. His Rudolphine Tables, published in 1627, became the foundation of modern celestial navigation. When Johannes Kepler died in 1630, he left behind more than scientific laws. He left a vision of the cosmos guided not by chaos, but by harmony. His discoveries paved the way for Isaac Newton and the physics that would explain why the planets move as they do. Kepler once wrote, I am stealing the golden vessels of the Egyptians to build a tabernacle for my God. 